For more information on tutoring or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, please visit MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So in the previous video, we mentioned that the square of a wave function, psi squared, is equal to the electron's probability density, which is the likelihood that we'd find a, an electron in a certain region of space. So in this video, we're going to draw them specifically for hydrogen's 1s orbital. Now this 1s might not make sense quite yet if you aren't familiar with it. If you are familiar with what 1s means, cool. But if not, that'll kind of be explained later. So if you come back to this video after you know what a 1s orbital is, then that might be a little bit helpful in sort of allowing your knowledge and understanding to come full circle. But if you don't know what it is right now, it's not too, too important. Okay, so the idea is that if we imagine an atom in 3D space, right, and we can define it by, or imagine it at least, by the 3D axis, where we have an x-axis, y-axis, and a z-axis, so we got three dimensions here. And this here, what's drawn, is the probability density, the electron probability density. So if we think about the origin, the intersection point of the x, y, and z axes as, you know, the center, and specifically as the nucleus, then this sort of everything in blue here is kind of um, sort of showing you the, the likelihood that an electron would wh where sort of the electron would be around that nucleus. So you can see that where the blue is really really dense and and, and um, where you see most of the blue is near the nucleus or near the center, right? So as you sort of move away though, these dots that represent the probability that an electron would kind of be there, um, they become less and less frequent, becomes less and less densely packed. So as you increase in distance away, that some distance we call r, right, as you move further and further away, the likelihood that you would find an electron at that certain point or at that certain point as you move further and further away becomes lower, right? So as r increases, the probability density decreases, which means that you're less likely to find an electron further away from the nucleus. And that makes sense, right? If we're thinking about hydrogens, um, if we're thinking about hydrogen, it's got one proton and one electron. So the electron is attracted to the proton at the nucleus, right? The, the proton's in the nucleus, it's positively charged, the electron's floating somewhere around it. It makes sense that it would most likely be as close as it can be to that nucleus, right? Because they're attracted, the opposite charges attract. So the probability density here if we graph the probability density versus the distance from the nucleus, that looks like this. Something like that. So what does this mean? Well, at, at really, really tiny distances away from the nucleus, so like here and here and here, the probability density is really, really high, right? We got tons and the, the likelihood that an electron would be super, super close to the nucleus is really high. But as you move further and further away, as the R value gets bigger, the probability density decreases. It decreases and decreases and decreases. And the value of the probability density, as the R gets really, really big, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Or excuse me, the probability density gets smaller and smaller and smaller as the R value continues to get big. But this value here approaches zero. The probability density approaches zero but it never actually hits zero, okay? So what does that mean? Okay, let's, see. let's reveal what's written here. Quite a bit of stuff. Okay, so this says, the farther a given point is from the nucleus, the less likely it is that an electron will be at that point. Okay, that makes sense given what we just said up here, right? Further away, less likely to find an electron there. Cool. The fact that the distance can increase infinitely, resulting in a smaller and smaller probability, but not a zero probability, means that an electron can be infinitely far away from the nucleus. That means an atom size is infinite. I put ish. <laughs> Infinite-ish. I even put LOL. It's pretty funny. Anyway, the point is that the atom size is can't really entirely be defined if this if this probability density doesn't actually hit zero, right? There's no actual like explicit limit. So because of this, it's t it's it's kind of you can't define the atom size if you include the entire probability density because you can't include the entire probability density. 
So because of this, we, um, scientists kind of say that the atom size includes around 90 to 95%. I think maybe some people will pick a certain value. Some might say 85 or 90. Some might say 95. But the point is that um, there's the atom size is sort of taken to be around 90 or 95% of the probability density, to include 90 to 95% of the probability density, because we can't include all 100%, right? So, so that's how the atom size is sort of looked at. Okay. Now, there's another way to think about probability density, and that is radial probability density. Okay, so what is that? So that's not just psi squared. It's 4 pi r squared psi squared. But what this is, the radial probability density, is the total probability of finding an electron at some particular distance r away from the nucleus. So it's not just the probability of finding an electron at a certain point that's r, r distance away, but the total probability of finding an electron uh, within that distance r away. So let's kind of visualize this by putting little rings around this nucleus that rep represent spheres that that encompass all of the um, the space at that distance r. So if we imagine a bunch of different rings here, and each of these rings represents some distance r, and all the area or, or volume sort of bound by each of these rings. So as you move further and further away, we've got different r values here, right? Like this, this would be, that's kind of hard to see, but if we have um, an r value maybe here, like this r value, r1 versus the versus this R2, right, or even further away, an R3. The radial probability density sort of describes the total probability of finding an electron within that space bound, uh, bound by that, that distance or that radius R. Okay. So simply, how can we put this in simple terms? It's basically, if we think about these different rings by making sort of spheres around the nucleus, it's basically asking the question, which sphere is most densely packed with electrons? So what happens here is that for a, for a while, as you increase R, you're including more and more of the probability density. So it the, the radial probability density will increase, but it'll only increase up into a certain point where the radial probability density will be at its maximum, and it'll drop back down and approach zero like, like it did before. With the, with the probability density. And the reason why is because at a certain point, your R is going to be so far away that most of what you're talking about within that space is just empty, and the probability density is really, really low as you get further and further away. So the radio probability density includes more empty space and less densely packed space, or less electron densely packed space, right? So the idea here is that there's a certain distance R, R sub e to the negative e negative or r of the electron and that is the distance from the nucleus where an electron is most likely to be you know in that region right or an electron that's the distance from the nucleus where an electron is most likely to be now for hydrogen that value is 0.529 angstrom right or 5.29 times 10 to the negative 11 meters now this value was actually Bohr's orbit distance from the nucleus. And Bohr, so so Bohr was kind of onto something. But the issue with what Bohr said is that Bohr said that the electron orbited at this distance away from the nucleus all the time, right? Whereas the quantum mechanical model says that that's where the electron spends most of its time. Okay. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you, and happy studying.